my experience with it was really nice, I'd have to say. I really liked Playfab, especially. I think um, one of the things that's been the most annoying in builds before in my life is just that you sort of make it, you build it, and then that's it. Um, it was really nice being able to change stuff on the server that was reflected in game without me having to actually rebuild it. Like I would probably use something like Playfab just for like development um, in the future, um, even if I wasn't planning on shipping with any online features, just because it's really easy to like custom configurate things uh, based on whatever's on the server. Um, and then as for like actually hosting it with Azure, I was lucky that I didn't really have to deal with that too much. Nick basically set up everything, and <laughs> I basically didn't have to touch it very much. I pushed um, basically the HTML pages that I needed to, and it pretty much just worked. So that was really nice. We had a big discussion. Um, I think it was like the Gossamer team and Okta sort of talked about the not wanting to make it really annoying for the user to log in. Um, while being able to maintain all of the security aspects. And we did sort of have a back and forth about maybe doing a less secure method that was more elegant for a user. But we kind of determined that in this case, we would probably go for the more secure route as um, Oct is a security company. And that might be something that we would be more wanting to showcase as opposed to an elegant user experience, just to show like how it could be done in games. but. Yeah, ideally, you would have something that the user sort of doesn't even know exists almost. You basically log in, and then it's all in the background after that would be, I guess, the ideal experience. Um, so trying to develop around that and having as minimal barriers uh, as possible would be definitely the best. I think historically, game security has in some cases not been great um and very often it's to facilitate you know a better user experience which totally makes sense um but we really felt that we wanted to kind of adhere to the best practices for security um since you know that is sort of what we do at okta um but we did want to find a way to do it that wasn't horribly intrusive and still gave the player a good experience so there was definitely a lot of conversation about you know, the best way to authenticate, the best way to log people in. Um, and, you know, I think we came to a really good sort of middle of the road between, I mean, we still did follow all of all of the security best practices, but we didn't make it so that it was terribly cumbersome for the users either. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always um, in security um, a balancing act of, of ease of use versus, you know, what is most secure. I mean, if you go most secure, it's, it's not going to be very fun to, you know, jump through the amount of hoops that, that we probably want you to jump through to keep everything secure. Um, you know, in the case of, um, you know, user experience, the, the most, the, the, the best user experience, honestly, is, is what's going to not pull the player out of immersion, um, you know, as, as much as possible. And so it, it, it the, the, obvious choice is, is do it in game. It's, it's have them stay in game, have them put their credentials in game, have them never leave the game. And, and that way they'll stay immersed into that experience. But unfortunately it's, it's not the most secure. Uh, there are a lot of different vectors, um, you know, that can potentially, you know, be leveraged in gaming. Um, gaming makes up 10% uh, of all the credential stuffing, uh, credential stuffing attacks that are happening, um, you know, every single uh, year. Um, and, and they also make up 54% of the DDoS attacks um, from, from uh, what, what Akamai is, is, is uh, you know, showing in, in some of their reports. And, and since we were already in the browser, it, it made a good experience to just um, allow the user to interact with the browser that they're already in. We pause the game, we present them with a pop-up where they can authenticate, uh, and then we just direct them right back into the game uh, once that authentication is done. It's a good balance of, of keeping the user in a trusted browser it's a good balance of keeping the user um, in a trusted login experience uh, where they're putting their credentials somewhere safe. Um, and, and it also it frees up the developer to not have to focus on implementing that within the game um, and, and not having to focus on, on keeping it um, you know, secure. Um, and so we, we, we chose that uh, as, as sort of the, the best approach uh, you know, for Code Tycoon. 
Uh, in the case of, of other build types too, you know, the, the same approach can be taken. You know, if you're doing uh, mobile development, for example, um, Chrome custom tabs as far as view controller can be interacted with in the same way uh, as what we're doing with, with uh, the, the browser, you know, on a PC environment. In terms of the process of game development in general, um, I mean, if anyone has met me, they will know that I'm a huge, huge believer in augmented reality technology. And I'm not even that excited about AR for the future of games necessarily, but just in terms of how it's going to change computing as a whole. Because um, I do think that like the next 10 years, we're gonna see, hopefully with the adoption uh, of of high-end augmented reality, wearable augmented reality devices um, that we're going to see as big of an impact as when we shifted to like smartphones. And th the idea of being able to shift away from needing like a screen, needing a monitor and a TV and a smartphone screen and all these screens that are constantly surrounding you to just having a, a piece of technology that I can project or, or place a digital screen wherever I want it to be. I think it's going to change so many things, um, not even just specifically in game development, but just in in life as a whole. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that technology. Um, and of course, along with that, I think uh, there are a lot of privacy and security concerns with augmented reality, but um, I have no idea how to even begin addressing those. <laughs> That's way beyond the scope of game development, the, the type of stuff that we work on. But um, yeah, I think AR technology is, is probably by far the most exciting thing that I'm really looking forward to in the next 10 years or so. And I'm most excited for more public-facing engines. Um, I think that the game engines that are out today, a lot of them were developed kind of like a little bit ago and with like different sort of um, design philosophies than a lot of the private engines that are like really, really good private engines are. And I think that the, none of the engines that we have today are like are like perfect, uh, even at like the one thing that they do. And I think um, just having more options and more engines is going to, and changing the like de design philosophy of those engines and having more input and more perspectives on those, we're gonna have some like really amazing technology come out that is going to be able to make software in general, like if we take those philosophies, software in general, but specifically games, much more performant and uh, much more fun to use and fun to program in, uh, more stable um, and you know easier to not less, not necessarily use, but um, more easy to get what you want out of it. If that if that makes sense. Um, and I think that there will be, um, it will be harder to use these engines probably. You will be, need more education and they will be more sophisticated uh, because they will sort of lose some of the user experience that makes it very intuitive. But I think that it'll be gained in a more optimal, you know, outcome, I guess. Um, Tom hit the nail on the head. Um... I think it's going to be, you know, MR specifically is going to be the next uh, iPhone. It's going to be the next way we interact with stuff. Um, I actually, uh, something I, I just started working on last night that I've been talking about for a while. Um, you know, I have this dream of being able to look at an IoT device with a headset on um, and just, just see these physical devices around my office and have a little pop-up where I can authenticate to that device without having to, um, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff on a phone or a whole bunch of stuff on a computer or whatever. I just look at it. Just click a, a virtual button um, and it and it authenticates and and so that's actually something that you know I'm going to try to build now. I, I, there's a lot of stuff that allows me to piece maybe a, a janky version of it together, but uh, I'm excited about you know a security in um, in the virtual space, security in in the mixed reality space, um, and I think it's going to be great. Yeah.